Well, hello there. Hello. Can you tell us your name? My name is Brenda McKee. Brenda McKee. And tell us, um, you're a resident of Mooresville, lifelong resident? A lifelong resident of Mooresville. Okay. What are some of the things you remember about Mooresville growing up here that has stuck out in your memory? The thing that I remember was we had to walk by two schools to get to one school. We walked from Sharp Street up to the top of the hill at South School was on the right. We crossed over, went across the tracks and down to the First Preps 10 Church. And to the right, you could go to Mooresville Junior High School. And we kept on walking until we got to Dunbar. Can you tell why did you have to keep walking? Because it was segregation. Segregation. Mm -hmm. Right. During that time of segregation, were there any places that you were forbidden to go, or were you able to, were you accepted in all the places here in town? No. And then, yeah, we were forbidden to go, forbidden to go a lot of places because our parents didn't, you know, allow us to go places. We knew where to go and where not to go. I remember the dime store. We always went in the side door at the bottom down there, the five and dime. And there's probably a lot of stores, but I don't remember them all, but we didn't go to certain places. We knew better. How was the race relationship uh, with the, the folks of Morrisville? Mm. I don't, I don't know. We stayed in our place and they stayed in their place. Like walking to school, we were on one side of the, the uh, sidewalks and they would be on the other side. Either they we went trying to make us get off into the street so they could come down and walk the sidewalks. When they tried to make you get off the streets and things, did that cause uproar? Were there conflicts and fights and riots or anything? Among the kids, we had no, we didn't do any rioting. I don't know anything about rioting, you know, anything like that. Okay. What did you all do for fun uh, here in Mooresville? Well, some of them may have gone to the West End Cafe down at 469. Uh, then Mr. Um, Carr had a cafe. And then there was a long time ago, there was Bill Allison's Cafe. But that time, it was on Sharp Street, you know, on Cabarrus. I wasn't old enough to go to those places, so I didn't go. And we went to church. <laughs> that was our fun. That was our getting out. And sometimes we would leave that Sunday morning and go here and there and be late Sunday evening coming back because you had to go visit everybody. you see your friends at church and your cousins, and that was our fun. Now, the movies was uptown, but I didn't get to go a lot. But I do remember those 25-cent movies. We were up on the balcony, and there was a little discrepancy there because they somebody would throw stuff down or they pitched stuff up back up. But other than that, which church were you attending? A long time ago, I went to Stewart's Chapel Church. It was on Sharp Street, across from the House of Prayer. And their members died out, and there weren't very many people there, and the church was dilapidated. So they tore it down and sold the property, and then we were on the move. Stewart's Chapel, I guess we had about eight to ten members, and we went to an old store down here on Biltmore, Mr. Dave Bowser's store. They fixed it up. Mr. Bruce Vanderbury, my grandfather, and some other men, Mr. Floyd Adams and them, they fixed it up. And we went to church there for a while. I was young. We left there. We went to St. Paul. We worshiped there for a while. We were all still Methodists. And I left there. And where did we go? I believe we went to Mount Moore. And they found out that they were affiliated with the Amy Zion Church. And so we had to leave there and go to Mars. <laughs> anyway, that's the way I've been all the way around with them. It was fun, but then we just get aggravated because, you know, we wanted a church. And finally, um, the church decided we were going to build one church. And this would be the center. They bought the land, and this is where we came. And then before it was over, we were split again. And I'm still here. That's been 50 years, so it's a long time. Who's your grandfather? Uh, Ertel Fish. Fish okay. They call him Doc. Okay. Do you remember the camp meetings out at Morrow's? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I 
remember a camp meeting. We always had our lunch, you know, that camp meeting Sunday, everybody in the back of the car. So I don't remember. They did spread dinner, though. They spread the dinner out there. Are you um, familiar with the Neal Town and the baseball area out there by St. Paul? I remember it, mm -hmm. but I don't know that much about it. I really don't. Okay. Are there any significant um, moments or any significant African Americans that you were associated with or remember back in your growing up here in Morrisville? Well, nobody will forget Ben McKenzie, who was here. The whole time he even did substitute teaching at the school and um, he was always busy always involved in different things at the community and the uh, NAACP well I remember my mom and them all they met even like with Kurt's grandmother and them I don't know whether he remembers it or not but has anybody mentioned this lady Mr. And Mrs. Reed that lived down on Stevenson Streets before the projects that was a couple an older couple and I think they were Presbyterian. I don't remember his name. And Mr. Tim Brown and his wife. It's a lot of them. My mother and them. And um, Mr. Robert or somebody. Uh, it was a lot. They all met. And they, and they had to have their private meeting together. They had their meetings. I was a little girl. And probably was the only one. But we knew to go sit in the corner and be quiet. So that's some of the things I do remember. Okay. That of... Uh, that you said about the five diner. What was four it? six diner. The four six diner. Who were the owners of that? Mr. Terry Graham and I can't remember his wife's name now. It'll come it's to Annie. Was it Annie? Ann Green. Miss Ann Green. And if you went in there and they tell you not to go, you smell like the cafe. It was some good food. <laughs> probably, other people have probably said it too. Go home. No, I ain't been there. You do smell just like the cafe. I have one, one question. You can, can leave me out. Uh, you remember when we all used to leave uh, for Sunday school? They called it the picnic. Mm -hmm. when we went on Gables buses. Yes. And, and Ray McKenzie, the one set that up. He set that up. We go to High Point, and yeah, that was a big thing because we never really got to go a lot. We didn't travel. Kids now, are blessed, they get to go all kind of places, but we'd be excited to go to High Point. And everybody pack up a bag of lunch, and that's about the only time some of them got to get in the swimming pool. Because we didn't go to the pool. It wasn't available. We had to work more. It wasn't available for us. And then we would go to Shelby. But that was a yearly thing that kids around boys would look forward to. When they go to Shelby, tell us about Shelby. What do you... Now, all I can remember was just a big playground area. <laughs> you know, it was just like it was in High Point. You could play. Play all day. You could swim. And everybody packed a big lunch, and you went and just enjoyed yourself, and we got along. There were very few fights. That's good. Now, um, can you think back the, during your time of being ill as little as a little child? Uh, what type of health care did you all have then? Not much. I went to Dr. Skin, and I think everybody did. But uh, you get your shot, and they doctored on us themselves. They knew stuff to get different herbs and things they put together from the backyard, and we got well. <laughs> that's, how, that's all I can remember. Do you remember, like, having to go out to get the herb, or? No, I didn't no. go out to do nothing like that. <laughs> no. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything that specifically stuck in your mind that you think the world needs to know about Mooresville? I don't know enough about it to talk. So, um, I really, hate that when my father, before he died, he knew a lot of history, and I just hate that we didn't tape it and put it down. Because Morsa had a little black section on Broad Street that was very powerful. Have y'all ever heard about it? It was very powerful. The camels and everybody, they did it. And he told it, and I've asked this other man's grandson, he said, I don't remember you, but they did it. I just hate we didn't write it down. I'm sorry Morsa didn't keep their history. Because Broad Street was full of us. They had little businesses and stuff. Broad Street is where a pike. On down that street where they had a coal house. We used to go there and get the coal. We used to, uh, they get coal. If you needed ice, Mr. Frank Parker would be out on the truck. He would bring the ice. You see him because we fought behind that truck. And just like Kurt was asking me, did I remember the smoke truck in the summertime? 
And we didn't have no sensors. We didn't run behind the smoke truck. Just, just <laughs> everything. And it was dirt roads. And they put that black oil on the street and everything. But back then, we didn't know. And we weren't sick that much, you know. We weren't that much sickness. The smoke truck. What? what it was the, uh, for the mosquitoes and the bugs. <laughs> and in the summer, the town would go from different, all over town with the smoke truck. Yeah, that's crazy too. We were behind the smoke truck. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. What what would you say about Dunbar uh, School? Uh, do you feel like Mr. Woods did us justice? Before you answer that, give me one second. Well, that's my school. I'm an alumni from the school. And as far as Mr. Woods doing us justice, I feel like he did the best he could do. They weren't gonna let him do it so much. We always got those books that had names in them. We got hand-me-downs. And some things that we did at Dunbar, some, of, some kids would have never got to do that if it wasn't for him being down there. So I must say, yeah, we'd be mad at him. But the man, looking at life now, the way I look at it, he did the best he could do. Cause they weren't gonna let him go so far. Just like right now here in Mooresville, they don't want us to go but so far. I mean, we're fighting a battle where I live now, about the park and whatever. So, but we can go further now. Yeah, and one other thing about Dunbar, uh, that, you know, this is just me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that we could have had maybe some pros. I'm sure we could have. sports that could have came out mm -hmm. of Mosul. Because uh, we didn't have any sports. We had no sports. Took all that with us. We didn't have that, but they didn't really want us to have it. I don't think we went as far. They went as far as we could go. Like Reggie Nixon, he could have been a pro baseball player. And now those guys playing basketball, Butch and Monroe and all of them, they played all those sports. Those guys could do it, but they could only go so far. Back in the day. We never got the chance. We only played. We'd have to go way out to play basketball or somewhere. But we we had fun and we did get to do some things because I was on the basketball team back in the day. So we did. And we had a fantastic band. The band at school or the band from the community? The band at school. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you're dealing with an issue with, with the park right now. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, I live on the east side. And they, they call it Willow Valley Park. And we just feel like that we don't have what we should have. They're spending a lot of money all over town. And I said, because I was a little girl, I remember when they were cleaning it off. I remember when George Mason went and won the money, and he wanted it to help with the park. His parents, my parents, Mr. Bill Allison, and all of them, they have cleaned those woods and stuff out for us to have a park. But we never had that much. They tell us we could go to the War Memorial. They didn't lie us at the War Memorial. And you better not leave. Now kids go everywhere. But we knew better. We couldn't go over there to play or do anything. So right now, some of y'all may not know, but they say it's 26 acres included in that area over there. And I don't know whether it's with the cemetery and the park, but where it is now, you see what we have. And we're working on seeing if we can get some other things for people. If you rent it, then that family that's rented it, they don't have but one shelter. If somebody else wanted to use it, you can't use it. The basketball court is a half basketball court. And then all that cut zoo and stuff, the question is, uh, can you cut some of this down and keep this clean out? They say it just keep coming back. Well, y'all keep coming back. We've seen it clean. But they, you know, what more do you want? We've, we've been in a meeting and we're waiting to see now what more that we can do. And down in the flat is where, across the street is where I played coming up. And that's been a lot of years. <clears throat> and this lady named Miss Winnie Hooper, she kept us going. We had no pool, but she took the holes and throw the water and stuff on us. We had a little bathroom and she had a little outhouse, a little old place. And the kids, as I got older, they said that she had more room, but I don't remember that room. And the creek, get in the creek, get your clay or whatever. But we had fun, but all those years ago, I think we should have more. Uh, this is off the record. Uh, this is off the record. 
I'm glad that you I'm bought. Gonna, you want 